A haymaker that's faster than haymaker. A deck built specifically for speed and power and nothing else. A deck built to win on turn three. If you would like the full history on Insanity and how it was developed, I have an entire video on that that I will link down in the description. But mainly what you need to know is that this deck was the product of a deck building revolution during the base set era in which people realized that the trainers were more powerful than the Pokemon. When it came to deck building, you relied much more on these overpowered trainers than you did actually attacking. And the idea of running only eight basic Pokemon in your deck, eight Pokemon total, did seem like insanity. Magmar became the staple attacker for this deck because Smokescreen could not only deal chip damage, but could also prevent Magmar from taking damage next turn, and for an additional energy, you could deal 20 damage and potentially poison your opponent, oftentimes forcing a switch. Especially after Jungle was released and Scyther was put in nearly every single archetype out there, Magmar was the most consistent fire type attacker. Arcanine was better, but you can't just splash Arcanine into a deck, plus it was an evolution card, so it required setup and much more energy to attack. Your other two staple attackers were Electabuzz and Hitmonchan, much like in Haymaker, and people tended to waffle on which of these they wanted to use. Considering speed and the energy curve for these cards, it's hard to beat Magmar and Electabuzz. Hitmonchan kind of falls below those, especially with Scyther in so many decks. Now, with that fighting resistance that Hitmonchan couldn't really deal with, despite my own personal preferences, I didn't make any changes to this deck list. This is the insanity version for kind of the definitive insanity deck for the base set era. So let's just get right into it. Let's see what made this deck good or not as good as people said. I don't know. Starting with the Fossil Magmar. Again, I can't sing this card's praises enough. I do think that this card was underrated even, you know, when it was out. People just praised Electabuzz, Scyther, and Hitmonchan so much they forget that Magmar was right on par with all of those cards. Uh, the main reason that it does get undersold is because it was weak to Rain Dance, and Rain Dance was everywhere. But Electabuzz is weak to Hitmonchan, and Hitmonchan was everywhere too, so not as understandable. Full playset of Magmar, full playset of Electabuzz. Electabuzz covers that Rain Dance weakness that Magmar has, so you don't have to rely on Magmar so much during that matchup. That is probably the hardest matchup for this deck. And I guess that Magmar doesn't really have a special weakness that it can hit, uh, except for maybe Venusaur, but not a lot of people are running Venusaur. And then of course we get into the Trainer Mania. Basically people figured out that draw power was one of the biggest powers you could have in the Pokemon TCG, and so they went full on with it. Four copies of Bill and four copies of Professor Oak in this deck. You're going to be going through your deck really fast just getting these cards that you need, but that's the idea of the deck, is to get everything you need, turn two, and pretty much win as quick as possible. In base set era, there's no way to really cycle through your deck, so if you don't win pretty quick, you're just gonna deck out and lose. And you know, these are big basics, but they are only hitting for chip damage. You're only dealing between 10 and 30 damage. If you get lucky with a Thunder Punch, you can do a little bit more, but plus power is going to be essential in getting those surprise knockouts. Your opponent may think they've got another turn to set up, so they will throw, throw down an energy on a Pokemon. But then, if you just get four plus powers into your hand off of some bills, then you can deal massive damage and knock out a 70 HP Pokemon very early game, and that's really going to throw your opponent off. That's where this deck's major strength is. Knocking out all of those other Haymaker cards much faster than they can get to you. And if you do get held up a bit by something like a Wigglytuff or a Chansey, that's where energy removal is going to come in. It's going to help stall them out while you rack up damage on them. They're going to be running energy removal too, but Magmar and Electabuzz can both attack for one energy, so it's not that much of a setback. You're still going to be able to do exactly what this deck does turn after turn without really having to worry about what your opponent has in their hand. And then we have four copies of Computer Search, the most powerful search card in this format. And a lot of people go, wow, that is 
way too many computer searches. That's a lot of cards to discard from your hand, but you're probably only gonna be using one of them. The full playset is just to ensure that you can get one early game. That way you can get the exact card you need in the moment you need it. So if you don't get one in your opening hand, you definitely will get one with whatever draw power card you have in your hand, whether it be Bill or Professor Oak. Full playset of energy retrieval to help combat your opponent's energy removals and super energy removals. And also you're gonna be discarding some cards from your hand to use other search tools like computer search and you can get those back easily with an energy retrieval right back into your hand that way you can lay them directly back onto a magmar or an electabuzz because there are fire energy and lightning energy in this deck you want to make sure you get the right one as fast as possible full play set of energy search is going to make that very easy like with the rest of this deck if you don't get the energy you need in your opening hand you can absolutely get it very easily with a combination of draw power and energy cert. And again, a full playset of item finder doesn't mean that you're gonna be using all four copies of it, just that you're gonna be able to readily get one into your hand whenever you need to retrieve a trainer from the discard. That way you don't have to cycle through your deck any more than you need to to get that card. If you've already played one, you can use an item finder just to recycle that one card. Because this is still technically a haymaker deck, Gust of Wind is essential for getting quick, easy surprise kills on your opponent, especially when you're up against decks like Rain Dance. Hitting those squirtles before they can evolve is absolutely necessary. Being able to pull out not only unevolved Pokemon, but Pokemon that aren't fully powered up yet. Like if you can pull a promo Mewtwo off of the bench and knock it out before it can start charging energy, that can be a game changer right there. And if your opponent does somehow match your speed early game, you always have scoop up to deprive your opponent of getting those knockouts. Both Magmar and Electabuzz can attack for only one energy, so scooping them up isn't that much of a problem when you can lay them right back down and attach an energy in the same turn. And yes, this deck is very dependent on powerful trainers, and what if your opponent plays a last? That's going to empty your hand and make it to where you don't have any resources to build off of at all. Well, that is a huge threat, and that's why version 4 of Insanity added two copies of Last itself. Depending on what area you lived in and played in, Last was either used in every deck or it wasn't used in very many decks at all. I know personally I never saw this card when I was playing in the base set era. No one used it. But if you do know that your opponent is using Last, then it's imperative that you use it before they do to get the Last out of their hand back into their deck. That's going to give you room to use all the trainers you want then play last as the last card in your hand hopefully or use a computer search discarding cards to get last into your hand and then use it that way you can put your opponent at the same disadvantage as you except your deck is probably going to be running a lot more draw power and trainer tools than theirs is since that's all this deck is insanity is complete trainer control and then you top off the deck with six fire and six lightning energy Okay, so if this deck was so powerful and so fast, why didn't more people use it? Well, that's because of two main archetypes, the first of which is the Sponge, also known as Damage Swap depending on how it was ran, but this deck had big trouble with Chansey. Now if you did use Hitmonchan, you could hit Chansey for weakness, but then you would also have a weakness to Alakazam or Blackstar Promo Mewtwo, which were used in Damage Swap. No matter how fast you were, how much damage you were outputting, how many plus powers you could recycle, you weren't going to be able to deal 120 damage to a Chansey fast enough to stop a Damage Swap setup that would basically eliminate all those damage counters. And so eventually, you would just run yourself out of cards before you could knock out more than one Chansey. The other major hurdle was Wigglytuff. Wigglytuff could deal damage faster and more efficiently than this deck could. And a lot of Wigglytuff builds utilize Clefairy Doll and Mysterious Fossil, which wouldn't net any knockouts from an Electabuzz or a Magmar. Unless you loaded up on plus powers early, you weren't even really able to knock out Jigglypuffs before they evolved. And even then, Wigglytuff builds almost always ran Super Potion. And this is a copy-pasted deck list, so if it was me running this build of the deck, I would only run three Computer Search and three Item Finder. I think with those odds, you're still going to be able to get one no matter what, considering how much draw power is in this deck. And with those vacancies, I would add one more Scoop Up and one more Gust of Wind. That way, you're adding just a little more offense and just a little more defense 
in place of some search power, which I don't feel is really necessary because you are running so much draw power in this deck, you shouldn't really have to be searching your deck for any specific cards really. Getting them in your hand isn't a problem for this build. And there you have it, that's the Insanity deck breakdown. Let me know what you think about this deck. Check out my other video just looking at how this deck was developed. If you're new to the channel and you like the content, feel free to like, subscribe, always helps. I'll put a link to all my socials down in the description. I just recently set up Discord and Facebook, among other things, so go ahead and check those out if you want to as well, and I will see you next video. Bye.